Yeah. But how do I roll the screen? Oh. Okay. Hello, hello, good afternoon. Um, this is Pooja Sinkhal. I'm one of the gastroenterologists um, here in Midtown uh, St. Anthony Hospital. And today, March, today is March 5th, which is Dress in Blue Day. And Dress in Blue Day is where we wear blue to raise awareness for colorectal cancer. And March is also Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month, so it's very apt that we are doing this Facebook Live presentation. So I'm here today to talk to you about colorectal cancer, what it is, um, what are the risk factors, and how we can prevent it. So thank you so much for joining me. And with that said, let's get started. And just bear with me while I try to learn how to do this. So here we go. All right, so what, why do we care about colorectal cancer? We care because colorectal cancer is the third most common cancer in both men and women in the United States. Um, having said that, it is one of the most preventable cancers as well that we know of, and that's really important to realize, a cancer that we can prevent. Um, so how do we do that is what we're gonna get into here. Sorry, just bear with me while I get a hang of controlling this presentation. All right. So what common cancer can, can you prevent with screening? Prostate, breast, or colorectal cancer? So the only one that we can prevent is actually colorectal cancer. So we have a lot of different screening tests like digital rectal exam to on an yearly basis to figure out if there is prostate enlargement and if there are signs of prostate cancer. We have mammograms to detect and diagnose breast cancer or breast lesions that would be worrisome for breast cancer. But with colorectal cancer, screening tests, which is one of the options is colonoscopy, you can actually diagnose and remove polyps or cancerous lesions at the same time, and that's the difference. You can prevent it, and that's very important to realize. Um, the power of prevention is what I want you to take away from this uh, presentation today. So what is colorectal cancer? So here is a pictogram depicting what our colon looks like, and that looks the same in male and female. This is the general idea. Your colon and rectum form the large bowel, or, or what's referred to as large intestine. The bottom six inches right here that you see is the rectum, which is the part of colon as well. So the bottom six inches right here is the rectum, okay? So American College of Gastroenterology is a national organization uh, that is, constitutes physicians, uh, primary care providers, uh, nurse practitioners, PAs, and we truly believe um, that screening by colonoscopy and polyp removal prevents colorectal cancer. And how do, how do we do that? Well, what is a polyp? Let's talk about that. A polyp is overgrowth of normal cell lining. So colon has the topmost layer inside, just like the cell lining of the colon. If it starts progressing and having some growths, it can mutate and then turn into colorectal cancer. When the overgrowth stays in the topmost layer, which is called the mucosa, it usually is at the point of a polyp. Once it starts penetrating the bottom layer, especially the submucosa, we start worrying about whether there's cancer present. Um, so just to reiterate, a polyp is a small clump of cells on the lining of the colon, just like if you would imagine skin on the outside would have a growth that can turn into cancer. Similarly, inside the colon wall, the topmost layer of the cell lining can have growth, clump of cells that are referred to as polyps. Most colon polyps are harmless. Some, uh, some colon polyps can develop into colorectal cancer. Not all polyps will turn into cancer. Um, 
Another important thing to realize, and a question that I often get is, well, I'm, I'm fine, I'm not having any symptoms, why do I need to go through this procedure called a colonoscopy? Well, here's the thing, colon polyps start off very small and they don't cause early symptoms. By the time you're having symptoms, it may be too late. The polyps may have progressed to colorectal cancer and that's dangerous. So coming back to the concept of prevention, the whole idea is to prevent bad things from happening, especially colorectal cancer. So just like we maintain our cars by yearly checkups and do the things to have the cars running longer, we have to do the same for our bodies, um, our human body. And colorectal is col colon colorectal system is an important organ of our system. Um, like I mentioned, it's the third most leading cause of cancer in both men and women. So this is a big deal and we got it. We got to take care of this. It's also important to mention Oklahoma currently is in the bottom three states in terms of national average. Oklahomans, we as Oklahomans are not doing a good job getting screened and getting, uh, getting prevention done right. Um, so coming back to colon polyps do not cause symptoms. That's a key takeaway point from today's talk. Do not wait for symptoms to arise. You need colon cancer screening when you turn 45, and I'll reiterate that here in a second as well. So here are some examples. There's a, I know these pictures are not pretty to look at, but here are some examples of what polyps look like. They come in all forms um, and shapes. So this one here on the right top is a pedunculated polyp. It has a little stalk. This one here is a very flat polyp, um, hard to see, and that's uh, why it's important to um, have good visualization and do a good prep to be able to see this. This is a big polyp and, um, you know, more of a sessile polyp. This is more of an ulcerated, as you can see, the middle is kind of umbilicated with the depression. Um, this may be more advanced polyp uh, and concerning for cancer. Some polyps are hard to see. As you can see, this one right here, um, this one is kind of hard to detect. That's why an experienced um, gastroenterologist or surgeon needs to be doing your procedure. Here is this one where it's hiding behind the fold and the scope had to be turned on itself to catch that. So American College of Gastroenterology team of physicians wants you to know that screening tests can find precancerous colon polyps so they can be removed before they turn into colorectal cancer. And that's kind of the universal guidelines and principles we all um, agree on and um, recommend. So colonoscopy is the only screening test that allows both identification and removal of polyps. So there are multiple screening tests, and I will delve into the others here in a second. Uh, but I'm talking about colonoscopy first and foremost because it's a one-step screening test. And what's a one-step screening test where you can actually diagnose and do something about it right there and then? And removal of polyps lead to 90% prevention from colorectal cancer. That's, that's huge. So here's a picture of how we would do colonoscopy. So usually during colonoscopy, we have um, uh, people undergoing the colonoscopy sedated. And here's the scope, the black scope. We go in, this little tube is small. It's, it has a very sophisticated, sophisticated camera. We go uh, up the left colon, here's the transverse colon, and we'll go to the right colon to the end of the colon. And here's example in real time uh, pictures where what we would see. So these are magnified views. This is how sophisticated the camera is. Here's a polyp. After we remove it, this is what it would look like. So again, a person, this person came in for a screening colonoscopy. A polyp was detected. It was clearly resected uh, and removed. A polypectomy was performed. So this person um, was potentially saved from colorectal cancer. And looking just based on this appearance, this looks like a pre-malignant 
um, or advanced polyp. So another question I get often is, colon, uh, can colon cancer affect women? Actually, that's very important to address because colorectal cancer affects both men and women. Um, and um, in Oklahoma, our rates for colorectal cancer affecting women are actually high, but the screening that the women in Oklahoma are getting are even lower than men. So that's not good, and we have to correct that, and we have to address why we as a state are not getting this done. So 1 in 23 lifetime risk of colorectal cancer for men and 1 in 25 lifetime risk of colorectal cancer in women. Uh, we are also seeing more prevalence of colorectal cancer um, now as compared to before. Estimates show that people born around 1990 have twice the risk of colon cancer and four times the risk of rectal cancer than those people who were born in 1950. Um, and that's, that's alarming. Um, you, the natural question is why? There are many theories um, out there and, you know, the the best evidence points to that we um, as a country are eating unhealthier and we are more sedentary because we are just using transportation more, not exercising as much. So that definitely has been linked to one of the causes. These are some of the risk factors that can increase or lead to increase in colorectal cancer. Family history of colorectal cancer is an independent risk factor. So if you have somebody in your family who had colon cancer, please talk to your primary care provider regarding what age you should be getting colon cancer screening because almost nine out of 10, that age, age is gonna be earlier than the standard universal recommendation. Anybody who has family history of adenoma, so adenomas are the type of polyps that have the potential of progressing into colon cancer. So if you have, if your mother or father um, had their colonoscopy at age 50 and were found to have adenomas, then you should know about that and you should discuss that, that because that would lead to increased risk of adenomas in you. Cigarette smoking, obesity, gallbladder removal, physical inactivity, that's the sedentary lifestyle that I had alluded to before, physical inactivity, oh, yeah, and abdominal radiation, cancer of the uterus or ovaries before age 50. Ulcerative colitis or Crohn's colitis or um, other independent risk factors that lead to earlier and higher risk of colorectal cancer. And African-American race, talk about health, um, health uh, disparity in terms of um, how different diseases affect different races um, um, early at an earlier age and more to more degree of severity. So what are the symptoms and signs of colorectal cancer? This is a trick question because we already addressed this. <laughs> Most early colorectal cancer, unfortunately, will not present, not present with any symptoms. So it's not till the colorectal cancer is advanced uh, where you would th see things like rectal bleeding or blood in stool, weight loss, abdominal bloating, pain, uh, anemia. Um, constipation. So this is really important to realize. Ne if you have symptoms though, uh, never, never ignore, contact your primary care provider right away and um, you know they will be able to guide you with proper testing and referrals to the specialist. And, um, so again, should I wait until I get symptoms to get checked for colorectal cancer? Absolutely not. Um, you, are, you should, if you have any questions about colon cancer screening, even at an earlier age, if you're not 45 and you're 40 and you're thinking about it and you have questions and you wanna learn about it, you should always talk to your primary care providers if this is something right for you, if you're having symptoms. And what are the symptoms that you should absolutely seek 
help in further evaluation. Those symptoms include blood and stool, um, drastic changes in bowel habits. I get patients all the time who've had normal bowel regimen all their life and all of a sudden they have started having constipation or they've started having diarrhea or the caliber of their stool has changed from uh, normal stooling to pain, pencil size stool or pebbles. Um, rectal pain, abdominal pain, unexpected weight loss, or unexpected or unexplained anemia. Anemia means low hemoglobin count. Uh, what should I do if I don't have any symptoms of colorectal cancer? Well, that's great news. Still get screened, okay, because we want to prevent it. All right, so let's talk about the one-step screening versus two-step screening. I, um, I briefly talked to you already about there are many ways to get screening for colon cancer. The only one-step screening method is colonoscopy. So again, what, that, what does that really mean? It means that in one step, with, that, with this test, you can look for growths that are called polyps and you can remove that. You can also remove early colorectal cancer successfully while you're doing that procedure. It's one of the most commonly performed gastrointestinal procedure in the United States. Um, and it's very, very safe if performed uh, by an experienced um, gastroenterologist um, or a surgeon, somebody skilled, uh, somebody trained adequately. Uh, what are the option? What are the other options of screening? There's the two-step screening tests, which are the stool-based tests. So there are two types of tests. One is fit testing. Fit testing refers to fecal immunochemical tests. And what this test is doing, it's detecting hidden blood in the stool. So sometimes, actually oftentimes, you don't see the blood by naked eye. It's so small in quantity that you have to use specialized tests like this one to detect blood in the, in the stool. And that's that fit test. A positive test requires a follow-up with colonoscopy. So that's why the second test, that's second step. So this is why this is called a two-step screening test. If you're doing a fit test, the recommendation is to do that yearly. Every year you send in your stool. Okay. The other option uh, for screening for colon ca colorectal cancer is multi-target stool DNA test. There's only one FDA-approved test that's on the market for this. This is called the ColorGuard. A lot of people are familiar with this. It's a non-invasive screening test that looks specifically for abnormal DNA that's associated with colon cancer or precancerous polyps. More, uh, it's definitely more sensitive than the FIT test, um, but there's also a good, um, higher chance of getting a false po positive as you increase in age. If, the mul if this test, the ColoGuard or, or the multi-target stool DNA test is negative, then the recommendation is to do the screening again in three years. If it's positive, then you again need the second step, which is the colonoscopy. So it also falls under the two-step screening test. Having said that, please understand that um, with regards to screening, what what is the absolute win and what, what is our goal is any test that you are going to get done. So get screened, okay? whether it's one step, whether it's two step. What are some of the other options for screening for colorectal cancer if individuals cannot or will not have a colonoscopy or a fit test and or they're not simply to, uh, candidates for colonoscopy? Well, there are options like CT colonography and colon capsule. Um, CT colonography, you still have to prep, you have to clean out your colon and you, go, you undergo a CT scan and the CT scan you know, has its protocol where it's looking at very, very thin slices of images, cross-sectional images of the colon, looking for any lesions. Of course, if it detects anything abnormal, again, you have to follow it up with a colonoscopy to remove it, to get tissue sample, to further make a treatment plan. 
Um, same thing with colon capsule. This is a pill you can take. It takes pictures of the colon, and the idea is that it can detect and flag if there are any lesions. It would also require follow for the colonoscopy if it's positive. So these tests all fall under two-step screening method. So here is the difference. Just to summarize, the one-step versus two-step test, the first one, the only test or the only screening test for colorectal cancer that's one step is colonoscopy. The two-step test options include fit testing that tests the hidden blood in stool, the multi-stool, the multi-DNA target stool test, which is the Cologuard, uh, CT colonography, colon capsule, and the one that we didn't specifically talk about is flexible sigmoidoscopy, which is just a shortened scope. So you would still do a colonoscopy, you just go to the left colon and not do a full colonoscopy. So when is the right time to get screened? So this is hot off the press. Uh, American College of Gastroenterology has changed its recommendation, and now the recommendations are that any average risk individuals um, um, should get start their screening for colorectal cancer at the age of 45. And they should maintain screening from 45 to 75 years. Beyond age 75 years, um, they recommend, as do most societies, that a decision to continue screening should be individualized and personalized. <clears throat> and that's important. Um, currently, ACG, American College of Gastroenterology, recommends colonoscopy and fit testing as the primary methods of colon colorectal cancer screening. Um, and they suggest concerning the following screening tests for individuals unable to undergo colonoscopy or fit testing. So those, again, were the multi-target stool DNA, CT colonography, or colon, colon capsule, or flex, flexible sigmoidoscopy. To the best of my knowledge, um, I am not sure um, in Oklahoma City, at least, that there is uh, there is a center that does colon capsule, uh, but I may be I may be incorrect about that. Uh, colonoscopy is done every 10 years, presuming that no polyps were found. Fit testing is done every year, like I had mentioned before. Multi-target stool DNA testing is done every three years. Flexible sigmoidoscopy every five to 10 years. CT colonography every five years colon capsule every five years. So in this regard, in the interval of doing screening, colonoscopy also has the longest uh, interval. Um, and uh, screening for African-Americans. Um, African-American population um, is, we are seeing yeah, prevalence of colorectal cancer in younger and younger age population. Their recommendation, the recommendation has been to start screening an African-American demographic at age 45 for a long time. And that, that stays current. Anybody, and I've already mentioned that, anybody with family history of colorectal cancer or polyps should talk to their physician or primary care pro provider to be counseled um, and um, um, fail, to be counseled about which age is, it's, is appropriate for them because those recommendations are usually earlier than 45 years. All right, so how can you arrange colorectal cancer screening? You should ask your primary care provider. You should ask um, gastroenterologists if you have even further questions and want to discuss the details of the procedure, um, the risks, benefits, um, and um, that's it. So I hope with this presentation um, that gives you some more information about colorectal cancer and it encourages you uh, to get screened. Thank you so much.
Yeah, so the question was, um, if there are any diets or supplements that have been shown uh, to help with prevention. So I will say, um, Physical activity has really been shown um, to combat this. Uh, the other thing that has um, really been linked to colon polyps and colon cancer is red meat intake, uh, which, you know, in the Midwest, we're notorious for doing that, but it has. It has been linked to increased colon polyps and colon cancer. So uh, decrease red meat intake, increase fiber intake and specifically fruits and vegetables, increase water intake, prevention of constipation. So um, 92 ounces of water on a daily basis is, is uh, kind of recommended for good colo colon health, avoiding constipation. So those are the big um, dietary recommendations I would make. Well, thank you so much.